I'm looking at Cat 22. Mm -hmm. Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle, The Great Gatsby. Classics, every one of them banned in some places. The Chicago Public Library put them on display in defiance of efforts nationwide to ban books. There was somebody who objected to the profanity or the challenge to the status quo. Jokes on the book banners because it turns out that um, readership for these books have increased. Uh, Streisand effect in full effect because as these titles have made more news headlines, more people are like, I don't know, maybe I should check out that book. It's real naughty. <laughs> the conservatives don't want me to read that naughty, naughty book. So let me give you the details on what this study indicates. And yes, there was a study done by researchers at Carnegie Mellon and George Mason University. The researchers utilized book circulation data from a large library content and services supplier to major public and academic libraries in the United States. The data set contained more than 17,000 titles, including over 1,500 that were banned as identified by 2021 and 2022 lists from the American Library Association and Penn America. Okay, so that's the methodology here. Some of those books feature topics such as race, gender, identity, and sexuality. And the study's goal was to determine what effect, if any, book bans by local schools and state bodies had on the demand for the banned titles. So when I say banned, I mean they're banned from public libraries or school libraries. They're not banned from you being able to purchase them, right? So here's what they found. Circulations of banned books increased 12% on average compared to similar non-banned titles after the ban. Banning a book in one state led to an 11% increase in circulation of the book in states of different political leanings that did not ban the book. This increase often featured books by lesser known authors, suggesting that new and relatively unknown authors gained from rise in consumer support. There's more, but I love this and I'm highly amused by it. Yeah. People love naughty things. <laughs> Well, it's not just naughty, it's what it does is it gets them extra media attention. If you say catcher in the rye uh, three times, catcher in the rye, catcher in the rye, now you're more likely to buy it. I just did it to you, right? And so these conservatives kept going, whatever you do, watch out for these books. And then they would say their titles over and over again. And then other news outlets repeat the titles over and over again. I'm surprised it only went up by 12%. So. If you're if you don't actually want people to read them, banning them is the world's worst strategy. It really is, and they're kind of doing these authors a favor. So, additionally, by the way, banned books with high visibility on social media ended up seeing increased readership. So. Ananya Sen, who's a professor of information systems and economics, who co authored this study, explained what this phenomenon, what's behind this phenomenon, if you will. The primary goal of book bans is to restrict access to books, but conversations about the bans often garner attention on a wider scale. This increased attention can either deter people from reading the book, unlikely, or influence consumers to read it, which would be an unintended consequence. But while the bans may have backfired in one way, unfortunately, they seem to be having a desired effect when it comes to the Republican lawmakers who make a big stink about these titles. They tend to see support from their base, from their donors. Efforts to transform book bans into a political issue tended to increase the amount of donations received by Republican House candidates relative to those received by Democratic House candidates, but only in Republican leaning states. And overall, book bans are not popular. And that's according to an NPR Ipsos poll earlier this year, where they found that almost 60% of K through 12 parents polled said that they oppose book bans from school boards and two thirds said they oppose state lawmakers bans as well. Yeah, so that's another phenomenon that makes sense. When politicians appeal to their base, they get more grassroots fundraising. Now, but when they go further, if their base is extreme, for luckily for progressives on economic issues, our base is super moderate, right? But for the Republicans, their base on social issues, for example, are, are pretty rabid, including book bans, right? So uh, that makes you more unpopular with the general population. That's just logic. 
right? But it does lead to raising a lot more money from your base. So which then greatly incentive because they need the money so bad, they almost all of American politics is based on money. And so, um, so that creates an incentive that's too attractive, it's, it's too alluring. So for remember politicians, 99% of them are not principled, they don't care. They're just in it for the power, right? So they're like, oh, there I can make a whole bunch of money if I demagogue against that book. Mm -hmm. Which of them is gonna have the principles to say no to that? No, now a lot of them are going, yeah, I don't care. I don't care if the book is right or wrong. I don't care if this makes sense or not. And I don't even care if the general population doesn't like me. I'm in a deep red district, okay? I'd be crazy not to fundraise off of this. I can't believe justice is coming. It's so immoral. We have to ban justice is oh, coming. Jank. I can't do this, Jake Uger and Wood. I can't believe he wrote a book called Justice is Coming that you could get at tyt.com slash justice when it should be banned, okay? What? What did I say something? You should have put like a, <laughs> I don't know, just something that would trigger a like fundamentalist in the Republican Party in your book? Like, just uh, Well, I did, they, they just haven't gotten to it. First of all, I have a whole chapter called Why Republicans Suck. So wait till they get a load of that, ban me in Florida, tyt.com slash justice. <laughs> okay, uh, but no, seriously, not just that, that's just politics, right? Uh, but in the book, I explain how the abortion is, I'm sorry, the Bible's pro-abortion as I've explained mm -hmm. many times on the show, don't make me do it again. Okay, you can get, read it in, Justice is coming. Uh, anyways, so for a lot of religious people, that's like heresy. They're like, how dare you quote the Bible? No, I've been taught that the Bible is against abortion. When you prove definitively that the Bible is in favor of abortion, I'm super mad at you, right? So I'm not saying you should ban me in Florida and Texas and all these different states. I'm just saying tyt.com slash justice is where you can get the book that might be banned by Republicans one day. And look, if you think your Bible tells you that abortion is wrong, great, don't get an abortion. I don't believe in your Bible, so please stop talking about the Bible to me. Please, yeah. I'm begging you. Okay. Or, or the Quran or the Talmud. Any, any religious doctrine. Or the Bhagavad Gita, lovely. Yeah, uh, that too, definitely. Right. Lovely, or the Upanishads or the Rig Vedas. Okay, okay Jake, now you're showing off. <laughs> Thanks for watching, if you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.